Hello, my name is Empty Without Brain. In this video, I will be discussing about the five main types of arguments that are often portrayed in the debates I have seen across the forum of YouTube. I think perhaps the best example would be the debate between Blackbuster Critic and Life in a Tent. I would definitely recommend watching it. Link is in the description bar. The five types of arguments I will be covering are identifying the tensions, cause and effect, starting with an observation or stating an hypothesis, arguing about words and definitions, and comparison and context. Identifying the tensions. This is where the point of strain between its constituent parts. You need to pinpoint three main things. The site of conflict and the two opposing sides in conflict. You need to assess the multiple or connected tensions. However, it is important to have a central focus, a prioritized site of interest. In order to create an effective argument, you need to limit the number of substantive points, because when you are debating, you will only have a limited time to speak, and it will be difficult to acknowledge every single point made effectively. For example, Nephilim Free wants to debate with Don Extus about the, how the universe developed from its origins to its current form. Needless to say, that would take a while to analyse every single point. The two approaches used to analyse and identify the tension are contradiction and deconstruction. Contradiction, otherwise known as dialectical thinking. This is where a person would have to identify two statements or positions which directly oppose one another. You would need to discuss why they contradict one another. You need to present the contradictory process, the something, its opposite and the synthesis of the contradiction. For example, theism and atheism are two positions which contradict one another concerning the subject of origins of life. You need to analyse the two perspectives and try to think of a way to fix the problem with your proposed model or demonstrate how a certain position has a superior model by comparison. Deconstruction. This is a method used to open up concepts. It can provide a person with useful criticism to establish notions. The key points of discussion are used to investigate the internal conflicts within its subject of inquiry. For example, how some people cherry-pick some verses from the Bible and interpret it as fact, where the West Barrow Baptist Church interprets the entire thing as fact and celebrates people dying as a result of God's judgment, compared to the cherry-pickers who think it's a part of God's mysterious plan. This demonstrates the inevitable failure of anything that, that has a fixed or final meaning. Again, interpret the Bible changing for, not changing for 2,000 years still doesn't make it any better. The point of any idea is to refine and create a better model of understanding. For example, science is always changing, always being refined, with updates from studies which portray different results. In summary, any idea or category of subject that is viewed as a permanent or stable is a pretense. In other words, a load of bollocks. Cause and effect. Now this is where you are stating the cause as a matter of fact. There are three main ways you need to apply in, or in order to present an effective argument when demonstrating your point of view. The first is to locate the relationship between one's subject matter. For example, the study of youth and community work demonstrates how a youth worker can be instrumental to develop an individual's an individual holistically, which would acknowledge the individual's physical, intellectual, emotional and social development. The second is to locate the issue. This is where someone can outline the mistake within the casual relationship claimed by somebody. For example, when somebody says their God is responsible for all good things that happen, they would have to concede that their God is also responsible for the innocent suffering as well. The third is apply inductive or deductive logic to analyze the quantitative and qualitative evidence explanation of causality this in a nutshell is looking at the specific facts and assessing the correlation between the cause and effect relationship people who apply qualitative evidence into where they're stating causes need to acknowledge three main points they need to search for counter evidence and engage with it in their argument they need to support the claimed relationship with a broad range of evidence. They need to indicate what kind and strength of relationship they are claiming. For example, scientists state the physical, chemical and biological relationship between organisms that have evolved. 
People who use quantitative evidence need to address how statistics alone do not explain the relationship. It is more of a description. They would need to explain the pattern between the two subjects. For example, the higher the temperature, the more people may suffer from a heat stroke. And you need to explain why. You need to outline and identify the pattern and relevant correlation in the relationship between the two subjects. The three main ways of presenting quantitative evidence is through probability analysis, correlation and regression trends. Probability analysis is covered in three forms. Uniform distribution analysis, where all of the chances are the same. For example, throwing a dice, all of the numbers have the same chance of being seen. The second is normal distribution analysis. This is a collection of continuous data. For example, a person's weight it can present the current status but not the future. Binomial distribution analysis is a third. This is where you are outlining future events. For example, the numbers on a dice have a 1 in 6 chance of being the number 6 and a 5 in 6 chance of failure. But to predict how many times out of 6 rolls the number 6 would turn up, you need to times the fraction 1 sixth by 6. So the chances of all the rolls of the dice would be 6, would be 6 out of the 36th, otherwise equal to 1 sixth. Correlations. Statistical correlations state the strength of the relationship between the items being compared. For example, you could determine the average of your results from each item and look at the graph and identify whether it is a positive or negative correlation between them to see the accuracy, which leads me on to regression trends, which states the nature of relationships between sets of data and can make predictions upon it. For example, in linear graphs of antiques, it can determine the value of an item over a period of time where you can identify a pattern leading to an understanding of its value. Observation to theory. This is an assessment of what you have observed, where you can present an evaluation of your observations. For example, someone could say how a thousand swans from a particular area where 100% of them were white. So the investigator makes the conclusions that all swans are white. However, this isn't an accurate assessment because there are different types of swans with a whole range of colours, for example, grey, black and more. When making a statement like this, you need to acknowledge the limitations of your evaluation. Hypothesis to theory. An hypothesis is a tentative explanation for a phenomenon used as a basis for further investigation. Through an investigation, a person will be conducting experiments to collect information to either find evidence supporting their hypothesis or they may have evidence rejecting their current hypothesis, which can help them refine their hypothesis. The best example to demonstrate this has to be the discipline of science, where they refine the knowledge from an investigation to a superior model of understanding. Arguing about words and definitions. I hate this one. Now this was a problem Aaron Ra and DPR Jones encountered when they were discussing with Sean, when he was unable to clearly def define the terms miracle and kinds. One of the met methods you can use and what DPR Jones used was using the Oxford English Dictionary. The best way perhaps to determine a present meaning would be to review the study of philo philology. This is the study of, of the structure and development of a language which discusses about the origins and changing of use of words. For example, the word fag did used to mean naggy or woman, but now it is used as an offensive slur to identify a homosexual. It would also be useful to have an understanding of linguistics, which is the study of language and use, and the sociolinguistics, which, which, is, which investigates the use of language in societies. And finally, the study of semotics, which examines and explores the meanings of signs as well as significa signification systems. For instance, from visual signs that you see on the street down to gestures like the middle finger. Discourse analysis. Now this is a combination of all of the above. This term has two principal meanings. A branch of linguistics that examines the way language is used in an ordinary context and the study of social and political development of categorization and knowledge of the language. 
comparison and context. Now there are two things you need to do when using this form of argument. You need to justify your choice of comparison and question your items of comparison. I've talked a little about this in one of my other videos. You need to clearly state the relationship between the two items and then compare it to the item being analyzed. For example, I could say this pinhead is the size of the Earth compared to the apple, which would be Jupiter. So the relationship I am pointing to, pointing out is size. Now when you question your items of comparison, unless your analogies are relevant, where you are able to clearly identify the relationship between the two items being compared, the comparison is not valid and will be completely disregarded. I want to make this clear, I have only presented an overview of these arguments, so I would definitely recommend you do some further reading on a book called How to Argue by Alistair Bonnet. The book presents an outline of how to choose and structure your arguments, how to argue in different academic contexts, the role of argument in dissertations and exams, and how to criticize arguments and be original. Really good book. Awesome.